Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte. We're taking a look at the New York Islanders today as we've heard rumors over the past couple of weeks, months for the Islanders, years, about how they need to add a elite top tier goal scorer. Patrick Line has been on the mind of the Islander fans and we'll be taking a look at those rumors in this video. If you like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey, and want to see the latest news around the NHL, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe down below. And let's take a look at the New York Islanders looking at Patrick Line. All right, so before I get too far into this video, just want to give a quick plug to our Instagram and Twitter handles at GoldLine underscore hockey. Links will be in the description down below as well as throughout this video. And also want to give a quick plug to our podcast, which I will be releasing. I'm recording this early, so it's going to be tomorrow, which if, when you're watching this will be today. Make sure to check out that podcast every Thursday. Episode one will be starting tonight. We're going to be taking a look at a couple of different things. The restricted free agent market. I'll probably be posting that video on YouTube just so you guys get a preview of what to expect from the podcast and uh, and see if you like it and maybe want to support the channel as well on our Patreon. Those will all be in the links down below. All right, so with that out of the way, the New York Islanders. And we're taking a look at the recent rumors, we've heard that Patrick Laine has been on the market. There was rumors that he wouldn't get re-signed by the Jets last season. There was rumors that Montreal would put in an offer sheet on Patrick Laine. There were rumors that he might go to Boston this offseason. Carolina, Columbus, Philadelphia, Anaheim. Throw any team out there that you want. We've heard the rumors that Laine is available and teams are, at the very least, interested in the finish forward. So... Let's take a look, starting things off with the New York Islanders' top six. And a lot has changed since General Manager Lou Lamorello has come to the New York Islanders. And a lot of it has stayed the same, though. So we'll be looking at that. Now, when you look at when I started this channel, two and a half years, man, it's been that long. Um, a year and a half, almost two years in February, which, thank you guys very much. We are over 600 subscribers on the channel very much appreciated. The road to 1K is officially a go, but that's besides the point. Ever since I've been starting this channel, even before I started this channel, the big thing with the New York Islanders was they need an elite forward, whether that was with John Tavares, who, who's that guy? Oh yeah, we forgot about him. He's up in Toronto now, but the Islanders have always lacked that star-powered winger, that Alexander Ovechkin, that Artemi Panarin, that that Patrick Kane-esque player. Now, obviously, those guys aren't just happen to be around. But for the Islanders specifically, it seems like it's always been an issue. And it doesn't even have to be that good of a player. Just a player that can score goals on the wing to complement their centers. And now you look at their top six, and you still are asking yourself that same question. So, first line, Anders Lee, Matt Barzell, Jordan Everly. Now we've seen that has worked. Uh, we saw the line change a little bit because now Barzell is officially the, the the number one center for the New York Islanders. It was more Brock Nelson last season, but this season and moving forward, it's the Matt Barzell show. Obviously, once he signs with the Islanders this off season, and then the second line you have Anthony Beauvillier, Brock Nelson, and Josh Bailey, which. They're pretty complimentary players, but again, there's no big name standing out. And I think we see this with another organization in that Metropolitan Division. I'm talking about the Columbus Blue Jackets. They are another team that they've got some really decent forwards and a deep center, you know, a deep prospect pool, but they're not that elite player. And that's kind of the scenario the Islanders have. Now, before we talk about what kind of projection of a trade we would have to see and all that, let's just look at the equation of... Patrick Line coming to the Islanders, what that would do to their depth chart. Because now you have Anders Lee, the captain, whatever. He stays on that top line. He's going to be in front of the net for the Islanders. You obviously have Matt Barzell down the middle, pending that he signs. And then Patrick Line, who automatically goes in on the right side, top tier talent for the New York Islanders, automatically pushes Jordan Everly down, especially with how he played last season for the Islanders. And then the second line, you have Josh Bailey, Brock Nelson, 
and Jordan Everly slides from the top line down to the second line, which I think is fair based off of how he has played recently. That's much better. It looked like a ghost. Anyway, that looks a lot better. So now, you may be asking yourselves, what to the... Now, as a Winnipeg Jet fan, if you've even stayed this long in the video, knowing I've got the Islander jersey on, i got the Islander wallpaper, why should I listen to this guy? That's a good question. And uh, we're going to be looking at what the Islanders would have to give Winnipeg. Because Winnipeg, if they're giving up Patrick Laine, a former second overall pick, they're not going to give him away cheap. And I wouldn't expect them to. That's the same thing as any team. If the Islanders, for some reason, traded out... Um, you know, if they trade out Matt Barzell tomorrow, I'd be thinking to myself, all right, why are the Islanders trading him out? They have to get a lot of value back. That's completely fair. I mean, Winnipeg has had Patrick Laine in the fold for four seasons now. Four seasons. He's been in the NHL. He has 60 points in his first season, 70 points in his second season, 50 points in his third season, and in only 68 games this year, he had 63 points in 68 games. So Patrick Laine, you know, he's one of those guys. He has 247 points in his NHL career. He's played in 305 games. <sighs> Former 2016 second overall pick behind Austin Matthews of the Maple Leafs. He's a talented, talented player. And the Islanders could use that. And I think the Winnipeg Jets realize how valuable he is on the market. And they're going to try and get as much out of any team they possibly can. So, Patrick Laine, 22 years old. He could play left shot, right shot. I'd prefer him on the right shot with the Islanders because you've got Lee on the left side. He's 22 years old. He has one year left on a $6.75 million contract. We know that's going to be going up in his next deal with whatever team he goes with. Whether that's the Islanders or the Blue Jackets or the Panthers or whatever team you want to throw in there. Um, he's not going to be the same price. And that's something that Lou Lamorello and the Islanders have to keep in mind when they think about trying to trade for him. Long term, Line has to sign in with the Islanders. Um, so what do the Islanders have to give up? This is the big question, right? And Islander fans, this is the realistic side of a deal for Patrick Line. Everybody's excited. Oh, Patrick Line, yes, let's bring him in. Until we're trading away our best defenseman and one of those top six wingers, which if you were paying attention to that top six with Line in there, somebody wasn't there. That's because he goes back to Winnipeg, in my opinion. So, start things off. If this doesn't take you off this idea of uh, Patrick Line trade, you're either crazy or you just really like Patrick Line. Right shot defenseman Ryan Pollock, 26 years old. He's a restricted free agent. Goodbye. He goes to the Winnipeg Jets. Are you staying tuned still, Islander fans? Or you clicked out of this video? Because that right there is a no deal for the for me as a New York Islander fan. And if I was the general manager of the New York Islanders, I hang up the phone on Kevin Shovel Day off. Good bit, good day. And we're not doing business. Ryan Pollock is a no starter. But for Winnipeg, obviously they're getting offers from somewhere where they feel they can get Ryan Pollock from the New York Islanders. Anthony Beauvillier, 23 years old, one year left on a $2.1 million contract. That will probably change upward a little bit, but not very much for Beauvillier. He really, a former first-round pick, really hasn't developed into that player that, that we were hoping he would become for the New York Islanders. I mean, he's still a very reliable player. He's a good penalty killer. But in terms of overall, um, you know, compatibility to the line, it is it's totally different former 2015 first round pick 28th overall last season he had 21 points in 68 games with the islanders not terribly bad or 39 points in 68 games with the isles so he's not too bad of a player but he's net that's his that's his highest ceiling that he's been at right now he's he's 23 years old he put up 24 points in his first season with the Islanders, 36 the next season. He played in Bridgeport for a little while, put up two points in those three games he played, came back, had a really nice season, but again, only 28 points, and then 39 points uh, this past season. So, you know, the situation with Bovillia is different, but for Winnipeg, it's the ability to add depth to their roster on cheaper contracts, which is what they'd be doing with Anthony Bovillier. And I threw in a 2021 second round pick. So the Islanders, just recap, and I'm not saying you give up one of Bovillier or Pollock. 
it's going to be Ryan Pollock, your top pairing defenseman on the right side, Anthony Beauvillier, who the Islanders have in the top six, and one of those second round picks they just got from the Colorado Avalanche in the Devin Tays deal. That's a no-go for me. I think that's what it would take. Winnipeg Jet fans, let me know in the comments down below. Do you think that is a reliable trade? Let me know down below. And the Islanders do not, you know, they, they have a first round pick for next season, but it would be very wise of Lamarello not to trade that out. We've seen how the NHL, how teams flip back and forth from season to season. The Senators a couple years back, the Avalanche, all these teams that have had those picks come back to bite them. I think the Islanders, Lou Lamarello is smarter than that to know to trade a first round pick this early on. Um, you know, with the Islanders situation, when Anthony Beauvillier leaves, now remember, they're saving cap space by not signing Ryan Pollock, which is valuable to an extent, and the 2.1 on Beauvillier's deal. Now, they're currently at $8.9 million in cap space. Once Beauvillier is out the door and Devin, and you don't have the prospect of signing Pollock, you're up to $11 million in cap space, which the Islanders could definitely sign Patrick Laine with that $11 million easily. I don't. I think he's going to command between 8 to 9 I don't think he's going to get more than that, especially with the flat salary cap and the bug. I don't see him making more than that. Now, for the Winnipeg Jet fans out there that have, hopefully you're still watching at this point, your lineup changes a little bit too because your current group is pretty solid, but you take a step back, but you save that cap space and you add your top tier defenseman as well as adding to that top six. So this is a win for the Winnipeg Jets as well. You have Connor, you have Kyle Connor, Mark Shifley, and Blake Wheeler. That top line continues and stays the same. Then the second line, you have Nikolai Ehlers, Stastny, as well as Beauvillier, which is more of a penalty killer option compared to the scoring guys that you have with uh, with Ehlers, Connor. He seems to complement well on that second line, I think. And worst case, he could even go to the third line, but I think he fits well on the second line for the Winnipeg Jets. And then the, that defense, Josh Morrissey will be giving fruit baskets over to Kevin Cheveldayoff if he makes this deal because Josh Morrissey is going to be playing with Ryan Pollock, who is a very highly sought after, uh, I would borderline elite defenseman in the NHL. Now, does that change under Paul Maurice in Winnipeg and not with Barry Trotz? That's something that's still to be ter- to be, you know to be determined. We don't know. But Ryan Pollock, in the situation he's with with the Islanders, his value is very high. And he would do very well on this blue line for the Winnipeg Jets. And then the second line, you have Nathan Boyu and Neil Pionk, which stays the same. Eh, Not a big fan of that, but it could be worse, I guess. And then you have Derek Forbert, yikes, and Dylan DeMello, who they currently have as their top pair defenseman with Morrissey. So he slips down two spots, keeping Pionk and Boyu together. So for Winnipeg... I mean, this is a this is a this is a home run. You look at their current cap space. You see my eye through there? Yeah, that's because it's a big fat zero. They have zero cap space right now. Uh, after this trade, they get six point seven five back from Line A moving out. Once Bo comes in, you have four point six five million to work with, but you still have to sign Ryan Pollock, which I don't think four and a half million gets it done. We just look at Devin Tays, who just signed with the Avalanche. And he's getting 4.1 per season for four years. I could easily say Pollock could get five. Five to five and a half million in his contract. At this rate, Winnipeg doesn't have that cap space. So they'd have to make another move of some sort to get that done. So there's a lot to unpack. This was a very deep-minded video. Hopefully you guys stuck around because I think it's very valuable to Islander fans as well as Winnipeg Jet fans. Just what it takes Oh, Line A's going to the Islanders. Islander fans start freaking out, getting excited. But then you realize the sacrifices and what it's going to cost. And even for Winnipeg, who they get a top pairing defenseman and a pretty solid top six winger in Beauvillier, they, the logistics don't work. They don't have the cap space. And the Islanders, is you know is Lou Lamarillo willing to make a big move like that? I really don't. I, he hasn't done it yet. And it, it just makes me feel like maybe he's just waiting and, it, and we just won't see that happen. So let me know in the comment section down below. Islanders fans, Jets fans, what do you think of my proposal of that trade? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you have any opinions on that, maybe a mock trade for yourself, let me know down 
in the comment section down below. Would love to hear it. And if you like what we're doing here at Gold Line Hockey, want to see the latest news around the NHL, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.